Sandwich incentive? I don't have bread. I did eat, a, like, two granola bars, like, an hour ago. We're in an ad. I'll wait until the ad goes away. I did eat two granola bars, like, an hour, or a couple hours ago when I got up to use the restroom, quietly in the background. Um, but, like, yeah, I don't know. It's getting close to dinner time, really. So what I should be doing is um, making a pot of rice and putting the curry that I have in the fridge on it. I have some leftovers from the weekend, and I am going to eat that for dinner. So, But, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if I'm being honest. There will definitely be whiskey on uh, Christmas Eve, though. I'll tell you that. I'll get out the good stuff that day. So, um, I'm just going to wait for the uh, 30 seconds on this ad to finish, and then I'll do the, the spiel. I did yell at the dev. I, I don't know if he's awake, but because he's in a bit of a different time zone than me, and he does work a morning job. Um... So this is, a, this is a game for a very particular type of person. I already tried Cogmine, Golden Crow Hotel, and Caves of Cut because of my recommendation videos. Really? Mm -hmm. Um. So this game. You know what's funny about the music? And Okay, every, everything in this game is made in open source free software. The art is made in GIMP. The engine is um, Godot. Uh, the music is made in a $15, like, open source thingy that you can get on itch, uh, with free instruments. Uh, everything in this game is made on open source stuff, which is funny because the dev kind of did that by accident and realized it later. <laughs> I was talking with him once and he's just like, yeah, so I kind of, like, didn't realize I was doing that until <laughs> kind of after the fact when someone pointed it out. Um, so this game is weird. Um... In like all those game salsas that you just mentioned are all weird. This one is weird in its own weird way. So it's a single screen roguelike that is gear and ability based. But it's like what if you took Path of Exile and everything that is fun about Path of Exile, which is theory crafting and build crafting, okay? and distilled it down to its minimal possible parts and made it turn-based. That's what this is. So it's about an hour and a half run, and it's all about theory crafting builds. And the idea is if you push one button and the entire screen explodes, you're winning, and you're doing it right. It is a, like, the game even describes, like, they, the developer didn't initially describe itself this way, but uh, it's literally Path of Axtra is a dark, dark fantasy roguelike of the ancient Earth uh, with a focus on streamlined and rapid hero customization, a broken build sandbox. Rev Brown, thank you very much for the 13th month. Welcome back. What's up? So it's a broken build sandbox. It's the game about making broken builds. If you like making broken builds and feeling satisfied when you push a button and everything blow up, that's this video game. That's the whole game. Um... It's also got a lot of really neat art in it. Uh, the guy that made it did amateur poetry. I think he might have actually been published at one point. Um, so this game has like procedurally generated poems in it. The lore and writing are both really neat and weird and leave enough to the imagination that they're like really cool, but at the same time open to interpretation. Uh, this is your character select. Um, you do not start with everything unlocked in the character select. You do have to unlock a lot of god, a lot of stuff. Um, I kind of just want to do my classic, which is one I haven't done in a minute. Um, it should be a matter of finding the right, the cull, Merbazun of Hadad. Um, now there are difficulties in this game. They are these cycles. So... When I stream this game, I tend to play on the first cycle. Purely because this is a game that not a lot of people know about. If you... If there was more people streaming this game and more people were aware of it, I would be playing on the harder difficulties. But the reason I play on the first cycle of humility when I'm streaming is the first cycle of humility is the 
intended difficulty, which is what you start on, where you basically learn the game. Once you beat the game, you unlock a harder cycle. Once you beat the game, you unlock a harder cycle. Once you beat the game, you unlock a harder cycle, which gives you XP faster, levels you up faster, gives you a faster power curve, but requires much, much, much more precise knowledge of the game. And honestly, I, I don't play this game enough to be able to track it. It's kind of like in Risk of Rain, uh, they give you the, uh, what are they, the moon trials or whatever, where it's like by the end of it, it's like if you get hit once, you're just dead. <laughs> like that kind of thing. So that's what this game does for its difficulty curve. So the more you beat it, the more harder modifiers you unlock, essentially. Which add in uh, powered up enemies and other cool stuff. But it's a fun puzzle regardless of that. Um, so for your character building, you select your culture, which is like a dude, basically. Uh, and yes, skeleton is a culture. We are properly represented here. Um, there's also goblin. Goblin is a culture as well. Uh, you could be a cyclops, a scoot, and they'll 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 come with various passives and perks, right? Um, the one that I'm gonna play is on step. Apply two evasion to yourself, and per ev and evasion per stack equals plus twenty dodge, and fifty percent of it is removed on stop. So basically, it's a dodge character, right? Um. The class that I'm going to take for this build is the Mubarizan, Mu Mu Mubarizan, uh, which is a, rena a renowned duelist champion that cuts enemies through at a w at uh, through a whirling dance. Now, what this thing does is on step, block, or dodge, perform an extra attack on an enemy. See what I'm getting at? So when I step, block, or dodge, I perform an extra attack. Okay, if on attack, if you have an an uh, an item equipped in an offhand perform a 10 damage hit against an adjacent enemy. So it's a dual wielding dodge dancer, basically. Now, the last thing that I'm taking is, is the Haddad, which is the god of wildfire and storms. Favors those who perform the dance of pure combat. Speed plus five, and then on attack, per fully charged prayer, which are three activatable abilities. I know this is a lot of information. This game actually makes a lot more sense if you play it yourself and then unlock everything one thing at a time. Um, Per fully charged prayer, deal 30 lightning damage in a path to an enemy in a four tile range and repeat with fire damage. So I do lightning and fire damage for free as long as I have at least one charged prayer. So basically, I have three abilities that can save my life or I can shoot fire and lightning. This sounds just like PoE, but it's a turn-based roguelike. What's funny is like, I don't know if the dev of this game's actually played Path of Exile. Most of his descriptions of this game comes from, um, like, uh, what's the word? Like, Magic the Gathering deck building? <laughs> so we start off with this proc gen poem based on our character. Uh, entered the wilderness, desiring life. Thus desired, asked for the power. Became more than power, an eroded mountain and dead and dune sea. Rainbow Star, head of annihilation, of splitting every part. And this game. This is the game. So you start off by, you know, leveling up. Um, I'm going to put a point into dexterity. You can also set something to auto level, but I'm not sure where that button is. I haven't found it yet. Um, now, this is, this is the game, right? So I can move around using the mouse. Uh, you, if you put your mouse on things, it'll tell you what things are and like what your, what your stats are. If you hover on yourself, if you click on yourself up here, um, it shows you who you are. This game's entirely keyboard driven as well, if you want, or you can play with just the mouse. It's, it's, it's I, and so probably would work pretty well on, um, uh, it would probably work pretty well on a Steam Deck. I haven't tried it myself, but try the demo on the Steam Deck if, if uh, you're worried about it. Um, so we start off and we also get a, we get a proc gen name as well. We are Viab. Viab. I guess, I guess it means we're viable? No, we're viacul. There you go. Um, so we're the vi we're viab of the cull Marbazan of Haddad. That's us. And um, you play it on Steam Deck. There you go. It works on Steam Deck. And we have 10 points to spend. So this these are our tech trees, right? Now, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tech trees. Okay? Um, we can pick three of them. Once I've selected one ability from three... 
You've not heard of those either? You haven't heard of Tales of Majael? Or Dungeon Crawl Stone Suit? It's fair that you haven't heard of Rift Wizard, but like... Rift Wizard is... Imagine you have 700 options for spells and every single one of them combines with the other spells and it's just a wizard sim. I, I like Rift Wizard. I am too stupid to play Rift Wizard. Like that game makes me feel painfully dumb. Tales of Majayal is the closest thing you'll get to Diablo while still being a roguelike and it costs like seven bucks for a premium account on Steam. And uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup is uh, the esports of roguelikes. How is this game? It is phenomenal. Possibly the most hidden gem I've found this year. Um, so what I want to do, I'm thinking. Oh, also, if you click on this plus up at the top here, um, these are your classes that you're building towards, right? Um, so 20 points in aim, interesting. Or as a mid slash weapon with at least 350 hit. On step, if you don't have wind strike, apply one strength, wind strike to yourself. Oh, well, we're working towards this. I need a slash weapon in my main hand with at least 350 base hit. That's easy. I can do that. So these are your um your your prestige classes, basically. This is what you're working towards with each run. You you pick a character. Um, and then you kind of pick one of a few. Some of them require points in specific tech trees. Some of them require specific weapons. Some of them require um, points in specific portions of a specific tech tree. This one's hysterical, um, which is on entrance. You summon a cult familiar for each different cult power you've finished. So you, you, you appear, and then boom, a billion cultists appear. And then a few a few turns later, they deal damage to themselves, kill themselves. And if you have a setup that is like... You basically, every single map you jump into, you summon a suicide cult that kills themselves and powers you up. It's phenomenal. It is hysterical. You appear, brrrr, the entire map fills up with cultists. You take two steps, they all die, and then everything explodes, usually. is how it goes. It is awesome. Um, So it's like... You, you could also just, like, you know, be whatever that is. Um, which I've never been. I don't, I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. But anyway, so we're gonna, we're looking for dodge abilities, right? So I can search through the tech tree. So, uh, per skill, uh, plus 50 dodge if total weapon size is less than 5. Okay. Plus 300%, uh, so I need a smaller weapon. Uh... What's, where's my weapon size? Accuracy, hit. Uh, what's your weapon size? Weapon size two? Weapon size five. Hmm. hmm. So I, I, I lose a bit on that. I need to I need a slash weapon anyway. So this lance is kind of a little bit redundant for me. Um, but that's okay. I can I can still start with this. So we're gonna take uh, agility. So I'm losing out on that first bit. Uh, on the to if total weapon size is less than five plus three hundred percent pierce. But uh, on dodge, perform a number of extra attacks on an adjacent enemy. So I'm just getting more and more attacks, right? Um, so we start off with that. I'm just going to level you up a few times. So my first prayer here uh, heals me. If I I have three prayer prayers, you earn them as you level up in the run. Um, uh, heal 200 and charges you as remove all scorch from yourself and plus one charge when you enter a new area. So I need to charge, move to three separate maps to gain this ability back. And we're fighting against this one enemy, which is a mud wretch, which is pretty weak. So let's go kill it. Now, I can move around with with um, numpad or uh, wazd. Um, or I can just hit tab to move towards the closest enemy. I don't want to hit tab with this particular build because I want to walk past enemies and not actually hit them. Which is going to be a little boring on this first floor because these guys are going to take a little bit to hit but once we hit the next floor watch me just die just gonna hit them the extra hits weren't worth it all right now that we've moved on to the next floor i gotta level up I level up my decks again Now I do that. And that's where the run starts to get going. 
for companion if your companions die you mean uh yes <laughs> most companions in this game are just like summoned characters which absolutely will just respawn on the next map all right what i get uh, I got this, which is on dealing astral or psychic damage. Deal. I mean, repulsion is useful, but no. Um, on attack with bare fist, heal 10. Huh. Yeah, no, neither of those are useful to me. I'm just going to leave them in my inventory. You can sacrifice items to power up other items. So let's search uh, on dodge. I want on dodge abilities. That's all on standstill. Hmm. Actually, let's just type in on dodge. On dodge, summon a number of psychomorphs. Uh. Well, I mean, it would actually be kind of logical to just go into the lightning tree and just get more lightning damage. Are ethereal projections of your weapon? Total summons. Huh. All right. Well, what else do we have? Extra attacks. I'm being hit. Perform a number of extra attacks against the enemy. Okay. Uh, on standstill, if adjacent enemy. Do not want that. On step. I could also do on step abilities. On step would work. On hit, on apply. Effect on step slash attack per blood damage stack. Bleed per stack. Okay. Uh, I feel like, I feel like entangle is always really good. On apply and tangle on it on attack on hit. You know, actually, let's take technique. It's less exciting, but on step slash on hit, I perform a number of extra attacks on on an enemy. Uh, you're weak to that and that. Um, so now what we can look at is our world map. The idea is to get to the end of the map. So, um. I want to make a large scrapbook for your kids on the join your stream. I I mean I don't know. <laughs> I try to just not think about chat GPT in general. That's pierce damage. I need slash. Although that would be pretty good temporarily at the very least. Alright, so we're gonna go to the forest. Because you guys are weak to astral. You resist death, that's fine. Um, they're weak to psychic, but that's fine. You. you don't resist anything? Sure. We can fight the hobgoblin. So you gaze upon a forest. You uh, sense the you hear the rattle of crude armor, and you see an altar lit with a sickly green flame. I'm just going to level up Vigor, which gives me more health. Easy peasy. These guys are super easy. I can just hold down tab for this one. Uh, let's level up Dexterity. Got the Bone Knife. I just need technique. That's what I need. Technique. So where, where do we want to go now? I could go to the first boss. I could go up. Ooh, is that slash? Is that slash? slash? Okay, so that, that could be good. Okay, that requires two-handing to get full potential. How about you down here? Also slash. On attack, deal slash damage to adjacent enemy. If damage plus... Equals 50% of your main hand hit. Ooh. It's a really good secondary hand weapon. Damage is speed plus three. 
Okay, both of those are very good. So we're going to go to the first boss tower. Now, these boss towers are optional, but we're going to go to the boss tower. Hello, cutest. How are you? Sometimes you just have to try the investments, yeah? I'm just going to step back here. Nice. That's what you want to see happening. You want to see stuff dying before it has the chance to hit you. Keep leveling up our speed. Uh, it's it's a very simple little bot in chat bot game. I'm bleeding. That's bad. Bleed stacks are scary. I need a heal is something that I'm going to need. Because right now my only heal literally stops my best ability from doing anything. <laughs> I'm kind of just banking on dodge for right now. Okay. I have enough to get technique. So, uh, once again, on step plus initial attack, uh, perform a number of extra attacks against the enemy. Extra attacks equals the skill level. Um, each point spent in martial grants you 1% pierce slash and blunt resistance, which is good. So, the next thing I do needs to be some sort of healing spell. Also, um, feel free to ask questions. So this is the boss, which is the Gil Ilga rises its scythe. A, a god of blood is near. And I pick up the first weapon. You can't equip weapons unless everything on the floor is dead. Uh, so it's it's strong against blood. It attacks with pierced damage and melee. It's a 25% chance to recover from harmful attack, attacks per turn. That's not too bad. I don't actually think I've fought this boss before. I'm just going to keep step like stepping forward and backwards. So as I get dodges, I get free attacks, right? So weaker enemies are actually really good to have nearby. Oh, wow. I am not damaging this guy. I'm going to use Vigor to heal myself. Fortunately, he ain't hitting me, so I'll just dance in circles until he die. Easy peasy. All right. Um. So you. Oh, actually, hold up. Got to pick up the other stuff. You go into my main hand, and you go into my off hand. So this main scimitar. Does slash damage to all adjacent units on adjacent attack. So it hits everything that's adjacent to me, not with just one unit. And currently is doing 140 hit and slash. And this one uh, gets bonus damage equal to 50% of my main hand hits. My current hit is 182. Um, now I can start sacrificing my weapons to start powering this setup up. Unless I find something better in the future. And then as you'll see... Uh, Everything will go up, except this. On dealing ice damage, 50% of the damage is dealt against a psychic. That could actually be really useful. And I could use that with the psychic. Ooh, do I want to go into the psychic tree? Eh, why not? I do need to... Um... I do, however, really need to level up strength the next couple times, or I'm just going to die. Okay, so we're now doing 220 hit on slash so continues and also like you know i'm, I'm just babbling about this game like if, if you have questions or want to talk <laughs> you can do that too um so we've got three options of where we go um these guys have something that's really scary i think uh, okay no, it's not those guys they're still rough um Spore beasts, they attack with poison or weak to death. Kind of scared of poison. Or weak to ice. They kind of resist everything I do. So I think I'm going to go to this middle bit. 
Babylon in the indie game whisper. I don't know. I do also have a uh, video going up on YouTube tomorrow of this game, which is a completed run. I want to get these spore beasts. These spore beasts used to have a heal ability. And in one, oh shit, I forgot to level up strength. Uh, in one of my um, streams of this game, I managed to create an infinitely repeating loop with three of them. And the developer removed all enemy healing abilities from the game because of it. Which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> So you're previewing the enemy, the upcoming enemies of the zone? Yeah, so it, it gives you, um, I don't need that, that's on standstill. On being attacked, deal psychic jam damage to the adjacent enemy. Huh. Interesting. So now I do psychic damage when I get attacked. It doesn't say if I get dodged, it says attacked, so they probably have to do damage to me. But, um... When I go to here, what I'm looking at is I could go here, I could go here, or I could go here. And then if I click on the enemies, up at the top here, it shows me all of the possible enemies I could fight. So I can figure out whether or not I can realistically beat them. It shows me exactly what they do. Um, I can look at, their, at the items that I'll get for each possible floor, figure out which item would be the best for me. Um... Like, this one would probably be pretty good. On attack, deal fire and pierce damage in a path to the target. Which is the ruby straight sword. And the ruby straight sword is... On the bottom. Or I could try and fight a boss. Or I could go to a brass temple, which is a, like, harder zone with better rewards. On dealing ice damage, deal more of it as fire... Max life to summon allies, useless to me. Lead. Uh, yeah, no, that's not needed. I'm going down. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think I was probably one of the first people to hear about that. And you want to know why? I got an email from their union. Level up strength. So I get rid of that encumbrance that I have. Hello, devilish. Yeah, no complaints today. Things have been pretty okay. There's the ruby straight sword. That was fast. I'm not actually sure how I insta give the whole map, but... Okay, so this... Uh, I'm going to swap... Wait, how big is this weapon? It's two? Three? Okay. And then I'm going to sacrifice this sword... Powers up my other two weapons. Sacrifice those pants. To make my pants better. So, I now have 150 slash on that. I did actually sacrifice some points to get that. I need a heal. Something that heals me. On dealing fire damage, heal yourself. I mean, that could be useful. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um... Okay, heals the dragon. On each turn, if enemies live, heal yourself. Well, I was kind of planning on going into this tree anyway, the life tree. On prayer, heal, heal yourself. I don't really want to be praying, though. Uh, what are you weak to? This thing. Resists nothing. Yeah, why don't we go attack the cool tech, I think, probably. Yeah, lots of items there. 
Just for those of you who wanted me to fight the out-of-level enemies. Also, there's an ad, so I will wait. So, chat room, what do you think of um, Path of Acra so far? Are those the only treasures, or are those, or are those, there are some super secret ones that you can see. At this point, they are the only treasures. Uh, but the game's also in early access, and um, to give you an idea, the dev updated it 14 times in 14 days uh, earlier this year. Like, and by earlier this year, I mean this month. Um, purely because somebody on Reddit said he uploaded, uh, he updated too slowly. Um, so... Who knows? Uh, there's a new piece of dialogue now at the end of the game that says a new gate shows uh, shows of the way elsewhere, but uh, that is yet to be seen or whatever. It's um, also what what's the date today, chat? Um, it's the twentieth. Uh, tomorrow is the winter sale, and I think this game will be twenty percent off or ten percent off, one of the two. So it will be slightly cheaper. Although, honestly, it's 10 bucks. So if money ain't a problem, I would just buy the game. But that's just me. That's my opinion because I want to see this this developer go full-time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not... It, it, uh, Valve works on Pacific Calendar. So ba basically in, like, what? It's 7.30... I don't probably like to. It usually goes. St sales usually start at 10 a.m., right? On Steam? Okay. So these take a little bit longer to kill. Wow, that hoit. Okay, I just need to kill this guy and then I get a heal. There we go. I almost died. Okay. We are lucky I had a lot of dodge. That's useless to me. On dealing fire slash lightning damage, apply one inflame to yourself. Remove scorch and freeze from yourself. Hmm. I think I'm going to swap out my armor to this. Sacrifice that. On step uh, slash attack per enemy, perform um, 10 hit damage against the adjacent enemy. Pierce weapon. I'm going to wield that in my offhand. And I'm going to sacrifice this. Power up the sword. It's up to 200 hit. I'm not going to use that because that's the opposite of dodge. And I'm not going to use that. All right. It's 3.34 a.m. Yeah, that's pretty late. Mm. Well, I know these guys are going to be easier to fight, so. You gaze upon pillars of salt. The ratmen have raised their flag here. It, it is said evil vines grow here. Let's go kill some angry plants. Also, to those of you who are Krug Smash fans, because I know there are a number of you. Um, I'm killing them with my armor. My armor is killing them. But anyway, uh, Krug Smash has been working on a video for this game for like a month. And it's been really cool seeing his uh, bits on Patreon. Five thirty p.m. Yep. One of my, uh, one of the, actually, the the, subs the streamer I've been subscribed to longer than anybody else, uh, is from Maui. On step, apply entangled to yourself and adjacent enemies. Initial attack. Okay, so that's the one we want. We want master entangle. Um, master entangle. Uh, on step slash being dealt damage. Apply entangled to yourself and adjacent enemies. Um. Entangle applied equals skill level. On initial attack, perform a number of extra attacks on an, on an adjacent enemy. Extra attacks equals five stacks of in, uh, equal stacks of entangle on self. Extra attacks use your main hand weapon and do not count as an initial attack. 
Okay. Uh, Entangle no longer reduces speed on self. No longer, you no longer take damage from any source uh, trapped by Entangle, and it is no longer removed with willpower. Uh, Entangle per stack, minus 10 dodge and minus 1 speed. Hmm. I still think that would be really good, actually. Uh, what's he... What he where he's at? Uh, Krugs, I think, is just entering his artiste phase where, like, he's becoming one of those YouTubers that puts a bajillion hours into a video, but also only uploads, like, once a month. I couldn't use keyboard and ask you. Don't insult your own intelligence because you couldn't play an obtuse video game. It's not fair to yourself. On dealing damage to yourself, deal blood damage to three adjacent enemies. That's useless. On being attacked, apply stasis to yourself. Gain 10 armor per stack of, a sta of stasis. Uh, prevents teleportation. That's fine. I have no way of teleporting. I've got... I'm so encumbered. I have a pretty hat now. An artisanal YouTuber. Yes. Accurate. Ooh. That is a really big sword. It's a two-hand, but it's a slash. I'm going to go for this one, I think, just so that... Over here, he has oh, you resist, like, everything I do. <laughs> that, that's actually not totally true. Um, you don't resist anything I do. Okay. Yeah, it should be fine. I actually have two swords, believe it or not. So I'm applying in flame to them. Nice. Yeah, I find this game very hypnotic very quickly. Wizard-like. Or Wizard-Ike, I think. Unless I've completely messed up your name. Hello! This is a game about kind of being a wizard. What's up? What were you up to? How was your stream? I don't know if I, if I have any mods. Can I get a shout-out for the Raiders? And chat room, can I get a couple beers for the Raiders? Ooh, okay, I need to back up. Huh. Well, I can get my prestige class now. Or a prestige class. Not the one that I really want. Stack, heal, ooh, hmm. Could become an angry lizard, but it's not the one that I wanted. I want Windblade. Oh, yeah, I've, I've heard of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup once or twice. I used to play it on my phone a ton. Stop playing it when they removed hunger, though. I'm one of those. Hmm. You know, actually, this is just the, the easy heal to get. Just fire healing. You forgot how to spell this word? It's shout out. There you go. Were your runs particularly noteworthy? I could heal myself. Hmm. Actually, not a bad idea. Based on how much damage I took in the last map. It is interesting how DCSS people in, are attracted to this game for one reason or another. Yeah, so I don't want that. Um, but I am going to sacrifice you to level up my main hand hit. Need to get that up to 250 for the thing that I want. It'll take a little bit. Hmm. Huh. 
Well, you resist everything I do. That's no fun. How about you? Firebird, you also kind of resist everything I do. Except for the pierce, obviously. One range with fire damage. Eh. Not bad. Two wins. Well done. Yeah, I stumble into roguelikes from time to time. Um, my two go-tos, right? Or my actually, probably my three go-tos, although one of them is a bit unfair because I haven't played it in a while. Uh, would be Jupiter Hell, this, and Caves of Cud. Um, although I'm always flirting with the idea of getting back to to into Tome and never really do it. I think I can kill this. Let's try it. I'm still t way too over-encumbered, though. Jesus Christ. All right, so we're going to go to the Brass Temple. You gaze upon a forbidden place. You see streaks of a fiery light. And you hear the flapping of ethereal wings. But I don't know if you're uh, new to my channel, but uh, the stuff that I'm primarily known for is Dwarf Fortress. That is my sphere of influence. Let's see how these things hurt. All right, they take damage pretty quick. That's okay. And I do actually have a heal, so we're, we are all right. Okay, I am going to need to heal, though. That was a little sketchy, but made it through. Per empty armor slot. Ooh. Wow, that would completely change my build. I mean, okay, hold on. Let me just look at this thing. Roller Coaster Tycoon? I haven't heard, uh, well, I'll say it. It was always Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, actually, and I haven't heard that name in a long, long time. Hmm. You know what? Fuck it. Let's try it. I am going to keep those because extra damage type is handy. And I'm going to go nuts. I'm being attacked. Apply stasis to yourself. We'll throw this stasis helm back on. And then just sacrifice everything else. Yeah. Tome's a, a weird one to get back into. Caveman, thank you very much for gifting a sub to Wizard. Appreciate you. Mm. You gaze upon a desert ruin. So have you played this, wizard? Or is this like something that you're just checking out out of curiosity? You gaze upon a desert ruin. You see the glittering blue star and the wind howls. You hear a faint chorus of high-pitched laughter. Oh, destroying hat. You know... As somebody who went back to Zoo Tycoon in the last 10 years, that game ages horribly. <laughs> All right, that may have been a mistake swapping out these weapons, but we'll see. That's not, we're okay. We're good. One of us, yeah, we, we kind of assimilate people. Ow! Come to me, you doofus. There you go. Merry Humbug, thanks, mate. I'm glad you understand my vibe. 
What's up, Anander? How goes the world down under? Are they? They're they're hurting each other. That's not me doing that. That's them. They're doing this to themselves. I mean, obviously I can help, but like. Let's grab Master Entangle. This is either going to kill me or this is going to be the best decision I've ever made for this build. It was a pretty good, it was a pretty good decision. Can confirm. Not bad. Mask of Acid. Ugh. I don't want to do Acid. Uh, plus three of any stacks of Corrosion applied by you. On being attacked by an adjacent enemy, apply Corrosion to the attacker. Corrosion is really strong. Deal fire damage to the attacker. Uh, damage to the attacker equal Corrosion stacks plus five. Effect Corrosion. Yes, it... It removes their block and armor, essentially. Um, I think it's time for a new hat. It looks like Rift Wizard. Uh, the Rift Wizard developer gave it a good review on Steam. <laughs> it's got a demo. Um, if you're curious about trying it, try the demo because it is the full game. Um, the only thing about the demo is it's about a year behind, I think, in development. I don't really want to fight any of these things. You're weak to lightning? Okay. Um, what are you weak to? You're also weak to lightning. Cool! I do lightning. That's excellent. Let's go kill the guys that are weak to lightning. You gaze upon a forest. Uh, the air distorts in shimmering curls, and you see spirals of burning ice. I will say, this is kind of like Rift Wizard with less math. <laughs> is maybe the easiest way to describe it. Although, that being said, I am curious to try Rift Wizard 2. Not bad. I grab another point in strength so that I don't... Oh, I'm over here now, I guess. So that I don't run... These these dudes, they teleport you places. So that I don't run into uh, encumbrance issues, which I probably won't now, so I should probably just start go going back to leveling up dodge. Uh, no, you don't want to see Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead Steam Edition because it's exactly the same as the non-Steam Edition, except it costs you money and only supports one of the many people who've worked on it. Sweet. The adjacent attacks are doing me well. There. I don't know. I just have this really weird aversion to buying open source games. Like the antithesis to open source. I could also level up willpower if I want more heals, but I feel like we're healing enough right now. Mm hmm? What about everybody else? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little weird when it comes to open source games like that. Stabby, stabby, at least you have a sword. I think that's what's happening. Uh, I'm walking past things and my dodge procs are making things die because I get free hits when I dodge. Every time I dodge, I get a number of free hits from a number of things. Uh... Astral, kind of just resist everything. These guys may actually be the better place to go. What do you attack with? They apply, they apply corrosion.
I don't have any corrosion resistance, so I should try to avoid those if possible. Man, I'm 10 off on my slash damage. I need a, I need a sword. God damn it. You know, nobody has swords. Okay, we'll go south. I love it when enemies teleport to me, which these guys do, which literally saves me the effort of having to go find them. <laughs> these guys have a lot of resistances, but it's okay. As long as I keep dodging, we're good. Because I just get free hits every time I dodge. Dealing fire damage heals me. The fire damage is coming from my prayers not being used. Because of my gods. I can just dodge back and forth between them and pretend I'm John Wick with swords. Combat log? Yeah, it's, it zooms. The combat log in this game is zooming. It's it's kind of fantastic. <laughs> it's like, this is one turn. It's like, cut, heal, cut. Or it's like, uh, scorch, hit, cut, apply scorch, hit, cut. Apply Scorch, Shock, Burn, Heal, Shock, Shock, Burn, Heal, Burn, Heal, Attack. Yeah, it's great. Is this like Dodgeball, but, but more violent? I uh, Sure, if the world's ending. Although, I, have you never played Dodgeball? That stuff's pretty violent. I say, aren't they going to jump to me in a second? I guess there's no more of the other guys. I'm going to throw a willpower onto me just to get a little bit extra healing. Now, this is, um, wow, actually, that hurt. Um, I would say that this is, uh, like, if somebody decided that they really, really, really liked Path of Exile and wanted to make Path of Exile, but, um, obviously a roguelike instead of an action RPG, and, uh, Let's just start leveling up agility. Don't need to be a paragon. Okay, I really need to heal. So I do less damage because I just used one of my prayers, which means I don't have as many fire stacks, but it's okay. I'm doing enough damage anyways. Okay, actually, I need to get away from this guy. because if, if he hits me with that poison stack, that's actually pretty brutal. Or I could just run to him. The guy at the back there. Got him. Wait. Plus 20 max life. Let's go. But no, this is a, this this entire game is just a build, a theory crafting build game. God damn it. I need a sword. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> sword. What do you resist? You resist poison. That's fine. Begins upon pillars of salt. The path is lined with so strangled, half-disguised corpses, and there are whole skeletons of cleansed flesh. Oh, encircling dark. Menacing with spikes, certainly. Do already know I can fight these, but those corrosion stacks won't be fun. Um, I'm actually just gonna use vigor because I'm scared of those corrosion stacks. There we go, that's what we wanted. Put on the corner. That sounds like messy business practices then if they've uh, chucked in the, the uh, on Steam with a price tag. I'll tell you this, um, Cataclysm is a really interesting game. There's a lot of forks 
And if you read into the development of... If you read into the development of Cataclysm at all, as Anander just said, a lot, as I said earlier, a lot of people work on that game. There's also a lot of disagreement within the people who work on that game. And because of that, there's a lot of forks. You know, open source drama is a very real thing. But there's a lot of forks of that game. And combine that with... There also happens to be a lot of disagreement on what direction to go. And if you I happen to agree with the one person who put it on Steam um, and want to support him, then by all means do it. But if you're just starting to play Cataclysm, the worst way to play Cataclysm is to buy it. Because you don't know which side of the drama you lean on. And also, it's still just a weird thing. And it's not cheap, so. That's a lot of forks. I'm more of a spork guy anyway. And it's not quite like um, a number of other open source games that are on Steam, which are just free, right? Like Heroes of Westnoth or whatever that game is. I always forget the name of it. Um, is free. And it's also open source. And there's plenty of examples of other open source games that are on Steam that are just free. Like, I, I, for me, it's not that you shouldn't be paid for your work. I think that... God damn it, I need a fucking... I need one sword. That's all I need. I need one sword and I get a big damage boost. I feel like if you... If you want to support an open source project, that's cool. And I think there should be ways to support open source projects. People should be paid for their work. Open source projects should be able to allocate resources and pay people for their work individually. But the way that Cataclysm is doing it is weird. It's just weird to me. It's also not particularly clear on the Steam page who the money goes to and why. Why that particular person? So. Like, to me, it would make more sense for that person to make a freaking Patreon and just be like, hey, if you like my branch of this game, like, give me $2 a month or whatever. That that would make a lot more sense to me. This is all one turn, by the way. Um, That middle guy is going to die. move through. I really need a big damage buff. And I'll get that. When I get my final classes. But I won't get that until... On adjacent shrug off, perform an extra attack. That's a bit high on encumbrance. Uh, on being dealt damage, apply to corrosion. But that's pants. Oh, and I'm not saying it's not legal. I'm just saying I don't like it. <laughs> it's absolutely legal. It's just weird. You would have liked to play more CDDA, but it feels so annoying. One million different items, and even with automation, it's still rather annoying. Y you know what's funny? I'm the guy that plays too much Dwarf Fortress, and I say that Cataclysm is tedious and overdeveloped. <laughs> but god damn it, I'm never going to get a slash item. Never. Okay. Okay. Um. You're weak to fire. You're weak to psychic. And you are just strong. Let's go through this one. I'm not weak. I just have to be careful with how I level up and when I use my spells. Uh, 
Um... On attack, if if attack range is greater than one, deal pierce. If attack range is greater than one? Ooh, no, that's not useful to me. On dealing slash or blunt damage, deal fire damage to two adjacent enemies. That could be useful. Um, What about here? Piercing vines. Apply entangle to two enemies in a three tile range. On hit, if enemy has entangled. Actually, that's what we want. That's what we want. Hello, Infinity. How are you? Uh, that tends to happen with uh, open source projects with like a desire for massive amounts of stuff. You know, it's funny. I bought Star Sector back when it was called Starfarer before they had to change the name because it of uh, Starfarer is the name of a um, a board game. This game looks pretty cool. Yep, and it's ten bucks. It's gonna be on sale tomorrow too. It has a free demo, and the full and the demo is the full game. I always say that as a spiel at the beginning of every single time somebody asks me if this game is fun or if I like it. Um, this, this game's cool. Starfarers of Catan, sure. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I haven't played Star Sector in a billion years. I just know it was a board game. I didn't actually know which board game. But uh, how's the run? Pretty good so far. We are just playing on the first cycle, so it's nothing too crazy. I just need a sword. And the game's not giving me a sword. And the reason I need a sword is because I need to up upgrade my sword's damage with slash damage. Um... Wait, actually, now I think I get it. I think I get it. Yay, I get it. Okay. Um, Windblade. Oh, he has a sword. Yes, sure. Uh, Windblade. 20% uh, chance to deal 200% slash damage on... And so this is great because all of my other stuff is just a chance to... deal 200% slash damage. <laughs> so... On average per turn, I'm hitting like, I don't know, 30, 40 times. <laughs> That's a lot of dice rolls for a 20% chance. Uh, apply three wind strike to self on step. If you don't have wind strike, apply one wind strike to self. Uh, effect, wind strike plus 300 dodge. Uh, one, plus 100 speed removed on attack after per stack triggers. Uh, per stack deal slash damage equal to your main hand hit. Okay, and let's also increase fire healing and teleport out. And now we get to fight the first real boss. Or the main level boss, I guess. Um, a twisting uh, mercurial shape uh, called down from the void to feast on all creation. The will form of an ascended power. That's what we're going to go fight. Master and Tangle. It is a pretty good skill, yeah. Nice. Eat my shorts, cultists. I don't have shorts. That's the joke. I'm actually curious what I'm doing for that 200%. So, 33. I cut for 33. Cut for 33. Cut for 1,551. Well, I guess that's the damage bump there. Nice. Like, I just, I, I did it, 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 just like tickle them, tickle them, tickle them, tickle them, tickle them, tickle them, chunk. It's great. Um. I think I'm just gonna, I'm still mid, I'm still mid turn. Okay, so that was one turn. I'm going to move once, and I'm going to hold my hands up, and you guys can see when the turn ends.
Not bad. That's a pretty good turn. And in case it's not obvious, this game is extraordinarily satisfying. It's also one of those games that I have massive amounts of problems convincing people to play that I know would really like it. Like, I know a lot of people who really like building and theory crafting games, but it's one of those games where it's just like, oh, it looks old. But I don't know. I love this game. This game's fantastic. Like, this is actually my favorite new game of the year. I don't even care. It's still in early access. Game of the year here. Just gonna hit them in the middle. Oh shit, got some got some corrosion on me. Gotta be careful with that. Hmm. You know, this game is just like a playable shonen anime. I realize there are games that are literally that, but like, don't at me, okay? Um Per scale level per empty armor slot. That might actually be pretty good. Plus one encumbrance is kind of scaring me though. Although I do have minus 10 encumbrance. <laughs> I have six encumbrance. Because I only have two filled in armor slots, but it still is two. And that just punched things until they were gone. I've absolutely done just like one punch man runs too. Where it's just like, oh, bang, you're dead. <laughs> I can't wait until Krug Smash's video on this game comes out. Like it's it's been it's been awesome like watching him work on it on his Patreon. Uh... Shoutouts to fire healing me. Cleansing fire. More ways than one. There you go. Perfect. It's really funny when I'm right next to an enemy and I hit it and it just instantly dies. And it's like, well, I don't get any extra damage because you went and died right away. I need you to try and hit me so I can dodge so that I can hit you again. The burst damage is still helpful, though. Don't get me wrong. Well, by the time you wake up, it'll probably be on sale, Fuzzatron. I haven't touched the thing. That's still, we're still in the same turn. Um, let's move down. I love how it's like, I'm not doing a lot of individual hit damage. I'm just hitting so many times that it doesn't matter. Alright, 
Just had to respond to a DM from my brother-in-law. I'm going snowshoeing with my dad and a friend of mine and my brother-in-law this weekend. Boom. So there, there will be pictures of mountain view and snow on Discord. Also, chat, say goodnight to Fuzzatron. You snooze good. Okay, I'm going to shut off my camera because there's a bunch of stuff behind it. Uh, the Vulgite emerges through a slit in the air. The walls vibrate in a sour smell of metal. Um, Dex, please. Uh. All right, so... Tune handing weapon. I think I'm gonna get this. For even more hits. I mean, that's the boss. Let's hit him. Just gonna keep hitting him. That's all one turn. Okay. Boss is dead. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. He moved. Never mind. I think um, I made a decent build. Nice. Yeah, no, this game was a really easy sell for me when I bought it because... I'd already been playing the itch.io version. Um, which was free. Which was just the demo. Which is now the demo, by the way. And um, the final area now. Um, and the... I think there's an area after this that's going to come out when the game is done. But... Um, and I'd already put 50 hours into this game. Hopefully not. Because that's one of the most disgusting parts about anime. <laughs> You're weak to astral? What about you? Okay. You are weak to what? I think I'm going to go south. And grab whatever that bulbous staff is. Uh, Let's just stick to Dex. Because now we are in the stars. The fields of stars. Wow, those die fast. Jesus, those are dying faster than the last things I was fighting. And also, I move so fast, they barely even get turns. Whoa. Bunch of stuff just appeared. I don't even know what that was, but they're dead, so it's fine. You think your land's lured up, up? That's not... At least that's only 100 bucks. There's so many horror stories about, like, what's going on. Or it's like, oh, yeah, no landlord upping your rent by, like, $2,000. What? Like, how, how do you deal with that? You don't. You scream and you run away. There we go. Cosmic Flail. What in the hell is that? On kill, deal astral damage, and, uh... Ooh. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> like, that's a neat idea, but not for this build. Uh, hat that or that. We know we can kill those top guys. Uh, yeah, I think we can fight those. The blood noodles. Time to kill some blood sausages. 
Uh-oh. Okay, never mind. I was worried for a second. I wasn't doing much damage, and then it, it got insta-gibbed when I actually hit it instead of just my... Uh oh shit, that did damage. Um. I'm gonna heal myself. Thank you much for that. Yeah, it's those weird eyeball things. I'm gonna wait for them to get a little closer. I'm gonna level up fire healing. I don't like this map at all. Hmm. I have another heal. Okay, we're fine now. Or should be. Like, these things die really fast, but if they have the open space against me, it's real bad. Up to f wait per week. You play rent weekly. That's interesting. Oh, uh, fuck you, game. Um. Okay, let's go this way. Okay, I'm going to use vigor, which heals me. Okay, so fortunately, as long as I keep waiting, if enemies live, I heal. So if they're taking forever to get to me, that's actually not a bad thing. Because on the bright side, I'm healing. Right, so this is the last floor because there's gear here. But obviously, optimally, I want enemies that I can just walk up to and kill, right? Is it weird that I'm sitting here going 2k rent per month? Yeah, that seems normal and kind of affordable. As, as somebody who's, like, paying half that. Um, for here, that seems kind of normal. But that, that's not here. That's interesting. An ender. Also, four, four, two grand a month for a four-bedroom house is like totally fine, in my opinion. But what are you weak to? Resists nothing. You kind of resist everything, but you don't resist fire. You deal an astral. Let's go down. For like a for a family home, that's pretty good. Yeah. Wow, six thousand damage. When I get that proc, jeez, I chunk things. I'm actually gonna level up strength. I'm gonna wait for another point. There we go. Perfect. Last few floors are very much a position, is where the game's like, hey, you, you, you know how to position in a video game, right? Like some of the early floors, they let you kind of be lazy, but very quickly it's like, well, by the way, uh, hey, if you <clears throat> don't know how to, you know, check your directions and figure out what direction you're headed, you're gonna have a hard time. Oh, these guys teleport on you? I didn't know that. That's actually really handy. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, sweet. You mean you want to just let me win? All right. Uh, let's level up dexterity. Move down. Got the necklace. Stab, 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 stab. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we have the final boss, which is a bunch of things that are mean. Um... Those will die really quick, but they hit pretty bad. These will also die really quick. 
Um, we know how quickly those will die because I fought them a bunch of times. That should be fine. And this is our boss. The king of many colors. An invader from beyond the astral wall. The king of demons, master of distorted light. I mean, there is a unit in my building which is uh, a one and a half bed, like a one bedroom apartment with a half den. And the bedroom doesn't have a door on it. So it's technically one room, but there's an archway, which is currently uh, up on the market for uh, $3,200 a month. Granted, I think the landlord just doesn't want anybody living there. But I, it's something. All right, last last floor. Let's go. So far, so good. Ooh, I do not like how I'm getting chunked. I do not like that at all. I'm a level up bigger. Four K a month for two bedroom. You know, I'll be honest, I don't know enough about Australian cities to be able to tell if that's like a move to a crappy place or not statement. I do know that White Castle is not very good, and that sounds kind of similar, so I'm just going to assume it's bad. It's just not sustainable. Yeah. The only way paying exorbitant costs for rent is sustainable is if you can afford to get away with less expenses. Like, if your cost of... If your rent is higher, but your actual cost of living is lower, if that makes any sense. Like, if you don't need a car or you don't need to drive as much or, um, you know, you don't... You, like, things are closer together. Maybe you don't have a commute. Um, stuff like that. Like, if, if you can make... It's worth living in places with expensive rent if your cost of living is lower because of it. Because then you have to factor in the cost of living rural. Which is, you know, you have to... There's other costs. Like, I, I grew up rural and it was like... I'm going to be honest with you. I, I had this discussion with my mother um, when she was driving me to the dentist the other day. Um, we Neither of us ever, 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 ever want to have to fill up all the bathtubs in the house again. Because there's a windstorm and if the power goes out, we don't have water and can't flush the toilets. Um, because we were on well water. So, yeah. I don't ever want to have to do that again. Oh, shit. That was the pop-up for the final boss. It says, oh, Pilgrim. The line that he says. Might as well level this up. Um, I'm just going to grab Master and Tangle. Wish me luck, chat. Boss teleported onto me, which is interesting. And, um, wait, no, not the boss. Okay, I couldn't quite see the outline of it. Not the boss, Diff different unit. Um, it was the guy at the bottom of the list there who teleported onto me. All right, let's go down to here. This is actually nice. Things attacking me one at a time. You can teleport and I can kill you. You die really quick because you're weak to everything I do. That's the boss, that guy. Let's just wait. Hit him. See how much damage I do. Let's hit him directly. See how much damage we do. I need those big damage procs or we're fucked. This is all one turn. I haven't done anything else. Those poison and corrosion stacks are going to two-shot me if I don't kill him. We might be dead. This is still the same turn. Holy shit, what's happening? Oh, I'm getting saved by the god is what's happening. I get one more save. I think I killed him. So if you have fully charged prayers, you have like a chance for the god to save your life when you hit zero HP. Um, I'm gonna heal myself and strength and strength. Well, because I had three prayers available, we just barely beat him. That was all one turn. So what happened was 
the, that big like AOE of like orange that arrived around me. Um, if you have a fully charged prayer, the god can save your life. Uh, when you hit zero HP, so I hit zero HP three times in that fight, and each time the boss saved my life, or the, the my god saved my life. I'm gonna level up Master and Tangle, and let's clean up the rest of it. Whew, you almost killed me. There we go. I was very close. <laughs> we almost died. Um, a strange portal beckons, but a path has yet to be revealed. Oh, that's a win. That's a full run. Granted, that is also on the, like, base level difficulty. Oh, pilgrim pride of Hadad, of cosmic struggle, of the recording, of the receding waters. Deep was the suffering of night. Glorious Acra. That was a lot of damage. Those are all the enemies on the right that we killed. We lasted for 21 days. Uh, we dealt 1.23862 uh, million damage. Killed 520 duties. There was one run I had where it was like, you killed 600 enemies and 1,400 allies. <laughs> Which was kind of funny. Those sac sacrifice runs are fun. All right, chat. Last stream that I did yesterday was 14 hours, and today's stream has been 11 and a half. I think I'm making up for that one day that I took off, eh? All right, everybody. It's time to <clears throat> call it, I think. That game's fun. Go buy it. Or go wishlist it and buy it tomorrow when it's on sale or whatever you got to do. Uh, don't run off, though. We are going to raid somebody. We are, in fact, going to raid somebody. So, uh, before I put on the raid music and everything, I just want to say, chat room, thanks for being awesome today. Hey, yeah. Like, seriously, you guys are, you guys are kind.